Hi, welcome. I'm Arnold. He's Sam. You send us your favorite jokes, new or old. Sam and I and our staff go through them and pick some to read. Like so. From Donald McDonald of Tiunga, California. One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind is not actually what astronaut Neil Armstrong said when he stepped onto the surface of the moon. Although he sounded like that because of the poor quality of the radio transmission beamed down to Earth. Huh. One of Armstrong's earliest champions at NASA was a brilliant young spacecraft engineer, Emmanuel Klein. They became hunting and fishing buddies and, uh, and eventually confided their innermost thoughts and feelings to each other. Like us. Most frustrating to Manny was the continued refusal of his new bride to give him oral sex. <laughs> she said she might someday if America ever put a man on the moon, like President Kennedy said it would. So here are Neil Armstrong's exact words when he set foot on the moon. One small step for man, one giant leap from Manny Klein. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like that. I like that. Okay. Um, here's one from Freddie Finger, Hole, Iowa. A young couple sees a sign in a pet store window reading, For Sale, Talking Chihuahua. $20. Mm -hmm. They go in to have a look and the owner says, the dog's out in the back and they're welcome to see him. They find a chihuahua lounging in a hammock uh -huh. and ask if he's the one who talks. See, si, we, oui, yes, he says. Mm -hmm. Would you like to converse in Spanish, French, or English? The couple choose English. Would he mind telling them a little bit about himself? My pleasure, the Chihuahua says. Let Donald J. Trump build his wall. My ancestors were brought to this great country legally by future U.S. President Teddy Roosevelt. I, personally, was with Homeland Security for three years, Interpol for two years, and the LAPD bomb squad for a year. I also did some uncredited movie work as a stunt double. Mm -hmm. The young couple go back into the pet shop, thoroughly confused. Why on earth is that amazing dog being sold for only $20? Because he's a liar, the pet shop owner says. He hasn't done any of those things. Well, and his French is a joke. That's a, a joke. That's a good one. Here's one from, from Harry Glenn of Butts, Alaska. This soup is too hot, five-year-old Albert Einstein said one night at supper. His mother was thrilled. These were the first words her child had ever spoken. Oh, Albert, Albert, we were so worried. We thought something was the matter with you. We thought you couldn't talk. How come you never said nothing before? Because up to now, everything's been okay. <laughs> yeah. Everything's okay. Yeah. Funny. Uh, and here's one from uh, Marcy Manners, Simpson, Virginia. She writes, A pretty middle-aged housewife steps out of the shower just as her husband steps in when they hear the front doorbell ringing repeatedly. She's expecting her sister, so she grabs a towel, runs downstairs to answer the door. Turns out to be Barney, the young software developer who recently moved in next door. I'll give you $800 to drop that towel, he says. Mm -hmm. She's both flattered and tempted to slam the door in his face, but then, then she thinks of all the things she and her husband could do with an extra $800. She slowly drops the towel. <laughs> he smiles approvingly <laughs> and hands over eight crisp $100 bills. When husband gets out of the shower, he asks who was at the door. Oh, nobody, 
the woman says, just Barney from next door. Did he mention anything about returning the $800 I lent him? Yeah, you gotta, you gotta know your neighbor. <laughs> you gotta know your neighbor. Uh, now, now let me tell, let me tell you a story of the high seas, and this one's from Lloyd George of Oshkosh, Wisconsin. A galley master goes below decks and cracks his whip over the emaciated men changed to their oars. Now hear this, me hotties. There's good news and bad news. The good news is in exactly five minutes, every one of you gets a full flagon of rum. Oh, through parched lips, they, they joyfully mumble, rum, rum, rum. <laughs> the galley master craps, cracks his whip again for silence. The bad news is in exactly 10 minutes, the captain wants to go water skiing. Hey, 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 water hey, skiing. Me hearties, water skiing. Yeah, hearties were happy. And uh, here's one from Bailey Clausen of Peekaboo, Idaho. After Pope Francis finished his papal, papal visit <clears throat> in America, he expressed a fervent desire to drive a big American car, and arrangements were quickly <laughs> made for him to drive the limousine to the airport on his way back to Rome. Francis was soon behind the wheel of a huge caddy, having a wonderful time, cutting off other drivers, speeding in and out of traffic, like a bat out of hell. This caught the attention of Sergeant J.J. Callahan in squad car 97, who pulled the limo over and told the pontiff to wait while he called the station. Sergeant was worried about the department's new policy on tickets. No favors, not for politicians, not for celebrities, not for nobody. Captain, Callahan said into his radio mic, I stopped this limo doing 90 on the way to the airport, but I thought I'd better check with you before I wrote up any ticket. Why, who is it? Don't know, all the windows are tinted. But it's got to be somebody pretty big. His driver's the Pope. Uh, yeah, next, next is NASCAR. Next is NASCAR. Well, so, so if you have a joke, new or old, you'd like to hear us read, email it to us at Arnold and Sam Read Your Jokes at c.hunter at icloud.com. Thank you. See you next week. Bye-bye.